it's uh Thursday, May 19, 2011. It's 1.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Roxanne Greenwich. Higher Lyrics Administrative Services, U.S. Citizens Control, Public Docket Database, and Greenwich Family Rescue Ezekiel and Ariel Brown. Private Investigation. Going to call some of the uh, missing and exploited uh, reporting trafficking FBI numbers uh, available at the U.S. Department of Justice official website www.justice.gov slash action, action center how to report a crime and we're going to see I'm going to, you'll, you'll hear what I'm going to ask I'm going to ask how can we here, let me just stop 800 843 lost which is 5678 If you are calling to report your child missing or the setting of a missing child, press 1 now. If you are calling to report child pornography, online enticement of children for sexual acts, child prostitution, or child sex tourism, press 2 now. If you are calling to report publications, press 3 now. If you are calling for any other reason, press 4 now. I pressed 4 for any other reason. Hi, um, I'm calling from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My name is Roxanne Greenwich, uh, but I'm also uh, an administrative services company who has gathered hundreds of reports of children being witnessed in the community, um, various types of abuse, some are sexual abuse, some are uh, trafficking, and the people that are doing it, uh, the, the individually criminally accountable people, are actually the CPS workers, and uh, we want to know, we already called once to the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, how to get our children on the, on the roster as missing and exploited, which they are, but uh, so far, they said the report has to come from the custodial parent making a uh, police report of a missing person of their child. And these uh, p these particular jurisdictions, they're in Washington, Texas, Philadelphia, uh, and Tennessee. Each in each case, the police uh, officers are refusing to take a report of a missing person because it happens to be a state employee that conspired to take the child that's actually doing the criminal acts and we've proven that they're criminal acts and we've proven that it's malpractice and they don't have immunity but we want to know how can we report them to the U.S. Department of Justice so that they might have a chance for the Federal Fugitive Task Force to look in and look, see what's going on with these kids. Okay. Um, what children are you talking about? I'm talking about more than 371. My, my, my higher lyrics administrative services is a Pennsylvania registered litigation referral mechanism. So people in various jurisdictions, we have several states. Uh, the one that is most dire that I'm calling about today that's really, the child is extremely witnessed, severely abused, and she may die. A two-year-old kidnap victim will be proven that she was kidnapped in violation of all existing laws, policies, and procedures. It's clearly a malpractice case reported already to John Walsh for his My Video story. But this child is being witnessed in visitations. Uh, degrade, she's had two hospitalizations and uh, a skin coming off in the genital area, abuse. And we have the two social workers that are doing it that are criminal. And everybody agrees with us in terms of... Of the, as a court process to go through in the federal courts and the counterclaims, but it's literally a public safety emergency that this child doesn't know where we nobody knows the so called foster parents that are abusing this child are at. The child is just witnessed on a weekly basis, degrading more and more at lesser and lesser access visitation given to the custodial parent while these processes, all these administrative processes are going on. And the child is literally missing and is being exploited. The exploitation is um, billability, but whoever these so-called clandestine foster parents who are not being revealed, they are abusing the child. There have been two 
uh, hospitalizations for pneumonia, bronchial infections, and her skin is seen literally coming off in the visitations. And the child is being starved, supposedly. She's losing a lot of weight. So we have witnesses, but the child technically qualifies as missing. She is being exploited. Nobody, no one is accountable for what's being done to this child, and we need a way to report it. Um, by, she's in social services, but she's yeah, and the, the social services people, the actual individual employees, are violating their own uh, DA, you know, Department of Human Services, the Child Welfare Protective Services rules, policies, and procedures. They're not disclosing her whereabouts. They're not honoring the visitation, and they're filing false documentation into the court about supposed foster parents going to take her 2,000 miles out of state to Arizona, which is we already documented there's child trafficking going on in Tucson, Arizona. So there's like no accountability and the child, this is one of the children that John Walsh talked about when he met with President Obama about the Recovery Act funding, that he would review the um, cases of court malpractice, regardless whether or not corruption is involved. There are people, families and children falling through the cracks as a result of malpractice they're not getting the protection from the courts. And this is one little girl that's going to die soon if somebody doesn't see that she's really a missing and exploited child. Nobody's accountable for what's happening to this child. We need a way to respectfully, lawfully report this to the no. U.S. Department of Justice. No. So, so the purpose of your call today is to find out how to report these children missing? Yeah, yeah. How, can, how, can, yeah, how can you hear or receive our evidence that she really does qualify as a missing and exploited child? Because we can't get the local municipality, the police um, department, to say that she is because technically she's in the custody of child welfare. But ch child welfare allowed her to fall through the cracks so that she is missing and exploited. And she's going to die. <laughs> so we need to, how can we tell the U.S. Department of Justice, show them our evidence that this child is in danger and maybe get the help of the federal authorities to look into this, to see about this child? Okay, well, have you contacted any federal agencies? Yeah, the missing and exploited children. I went to their official website, and they I said, catch 22, they that's, say... That's from, yeah. that's from a law enforcement agency. Oh, well, this is the uh, U.S. Department of Justice. I came to the official website and to this page right here, the Action Center, and this is the first number that I called about okay. trafficking persons. So, okay, but you're asking about the Department of Justice. What about law enforcement? So, I'm just... Can you... Can you yeah. Can you tell me, any, is there any way I can report to you about that a child is being trafficked and in the process she's going to be killed? She, uh, her transport, everything about her is being billed by a conflict of interest. How did you last call, ma'am? This is the first time I'm calling you. And, I, and just like you're recording my you call, I'm recording this call. You said you phoned before to report something to Nathan before? Oh we've, oh, we, oh, we've done letters to the White House Valerie Durant uh, domestic violence awareness event. We have a certified service distribution list. John Walsh, my video story where he got Recovery Act funding. We look and see the different uh, federally funded and state taxpayer funded sources that are meant for the preservation of families and authorized law enforcement. And then we send them our evidence. However, while we're waiting to get something back, this child is going to die. We have we have over 371 children at risk that are being abused that we keep reporting. But this particular little Autumn Joy August in Kelso, Washington, is going to die if there's not some type of federal law enforcement intervention. No one is accounting for the abuse that is occurring that's being witnessed happening to this child. And you're saying that she's been trafficked? And yeah, as a result of it, the, the reason is conflict of interest and malpractice and corruption poison state court between the CPS funding agencies. That's the reason. That's why we got to come out of the jurisdiction. We're asking for the feds to get involved because this particular jurisdiction is corruption poison. And these people, these two particular people, Debbie Marker and Colin Thiessen, are the DHS state employees that are abusing their immunity in the 1983 Civil Rights Act to literally bill and traffic children to what we believe because of the types of um, uh, abuse and injuries suffered by Autumn Joy August on September 9th, 2010. We believe that she's with 
uh, child molesters, abusers, ch children, pedophiles. So that she's had two hospitalizations. She's been witnessed with her skin coming off, scared to death, all the signs of trauma from uh, sexual molestation in her general area. And no one is accountable. And we need some federal intervention to go in because of that jurisdiction is not going to do anything about it. <laughs> so we want to know how can we report this? How can we show you our proofs, our evidence? To get federal intervention to save a trafficked child. Um, okay. And you've been to our website before. You have seen this. I mean, if, if you're calling to report that she's being trafficked, that's something you can follow on our website, cyber2blind.com, and you can include that information there. What is your website? Our main website is missingkids.com. Missingkids.com, and I what you have an official contact form I can send you all our evidence. Well, you would click on the cyber tip line if you're talking about a child who's being exploited. Okay. So you still have that information, and an analyst would be assigned to the case to take a look into it. Oh, so someone? Okay, excellent. Oh, so a federal agent I would be assigned to the case. You'd be assigned an analyst. Oh, an analyst. Okay. The analyst here work with law enforcement at this. Level and federal level. So okay, does it matter do that. does it matter who uh, makes the report? Like does the analyst need the parents contact information or the person that might the person Yeah. If you have it you can include it, but you can actually file the report yourself. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. All right, and I I have both the parent both the parent, the grandmother in Washington and all the evidence that they fed to me, my company and everything. All right, so it's called okay. it's missingkids.com is the website? Alright, but once, once you're on the website, look on the website and slash for cyber to find and click on that and you'll see a form to fill out all the information. God bless you. I'm going to tell everybody to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alright, have, have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Wow, that is good. Missingkids.com. Look on the left side. There's a form, cyberkidslink, and fill out that form. Okay, that's what we're going to